God bless everybody tonight. We are so honored to be in your presence. Amen. We're really glad to be in your presence. And I greet you in the Aramaic language. Yaqwa Abu Yabaraka. I thank God for this day. Man, I tell you, I have a I have a 25-year-old as of today. Uh, my daughter Nadia Cummings. I uh, turned 25 today, and I tell you, she sent me some beautiful pictures, which I think that you may have seen. I want to thank everyone that's coming on. You know, our prayer warriors, you know, I want to thank you for standing in the gap, for praying for us. You know, I want to thank everybody down in Mississippi, Shabbat, uh, Global Ministry, Mississippi, um, Deaconess Joe Thomas, Deacon Steve Thomas, Akisha and the family there, Mary Washington uh, there. Um, we want to thank all of you up in Canada, Ambassador Zelma Bowen. You know, we want to thank you there and those that you have gathered and those that you have touched all the way in Trinidad, um, all the way in Jamaica, you know, uh, for introducing us to uh, Nehemiah, the 10 star general and Lady Marine down in Florida. I mean, we're touching the world and, and we're, ha we're excited because you are excited. Really, we are excited because you are excited too. Uh, Kansas City, Kansas, our sister Brenda Stacer, I heard you got your book today. And uh, we're happy that you have the two covenants. And everybody need to get this book, you know. Uh, it's the covenants between Ishmael and Isaac. And uh, it's biblical. We explain it. And um, it, it removes a lot of questions. And uh, the two covenants is going to be a part of our um, university. The School of the Prophets University is scheduled to open on August the 20th this year. Of course, we have a lot of things going on. Movies and documentaries and things like that are happening now. But we're so honored. But believe me, we're so honored. The Madisons are back in, in, Can in uh, Mississippi, South Haven, Mississippi. The Madisons, you know, our um, intern minister, Michelle uh, folks is with us. And... Um, we're excited because of the time that we're in. You know, everything is based on timing. You know, I watched the um, I watched the Super Bowl, and I watched the timing of the passes that were received. The timing, everything is based on timing. You know, um, there's a big clock there, and everything is based on time. I mean, everything is is based on mathematical figures. I want to say that. And I'm going to do some teaching than that because I want to talk about the set time has come. You know, and um, we don't understand prophecy. When I was in um, Southern Bible Institute, they only taught us about dispensations, all the, the four dispensations. But they never taught us about revelation. You know, there is uh, a such thing as revelation. God reveals uh, even his secrets to, to only um, his children. You know, those who serve, worship, obey, you know, he will re reveal his secrets. Uh, Deuteronomy, I think it's 29 and 29, said, The secret things belong unto the Lord thy God, but the things that are revealed are revealed to us and to his children. Uh, I want to thank um, uh, uh, Sister La Precious, who came with her three children on uh, last Sunday, and how God blessed her uh, to be with us. But I want to teach tonight. Because I really want this devil gone. Amen. I mean, he should be gone by now. Do you know what it means to be the light of the world? The Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. Amen. And I want to make it, I want to make it plain tonight. Jesus' last name is not Christ. I'm going to say that again. Jesus' last name is not Christ. He is Jesus the Christ. Christ means the anointed one, the Messiah. Are you listening to me? So all of you, you know, who, who've been thinking that Jesus' last name is Christ, somebody said, well, what's Jesus' last name? He said, Christ. That is not his name. As, as a matter of fact, his name is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is Jesus the Christ. And he is the anointed one. Amen and amen. And if you follow him and if you listen to the word of God, you will walk into that same kind of anointing. One of my master teachers told me um, back in 1990, he said, brother, he said, Jesus is the supreme example of human potential. And I, I didn't understand all of that back then. 
but he is the example of your potential. Amen. I mean, <laughs> his name is not Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. And, and, and the only way that you are going to defeat the devil, you got to walk in the anointing of God. Amen. You got to walk in the anointing, the power of God. Amen. And the word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is so powerful, it'll let you on, it'll let you in on what people are thinking. They only have to tell you. I mean, you, you're able to read body language. You're able to read actions, you know. And so I, I want to teach this tonight because when Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ says, you are the light of the world. What does that mean? What does that mean? You are the light of the world. Light eliminates darkness. You become the eliminator of darkness. Ain't nobody coming out the sky to chase no devil away. You are the devil chaser. Oh, y'all don't hear me. And <laughs> you are the one. You are the one that runs it. Look in the book of Job 18 and 18. I've been dealing with this. Can I just warm up a little bit tonight? before we get into this subject that is so deep. You know, I mean, Job 18 and 18 tells you exactly, you know, what your mission is. Job 18 and 18. It says, He, meaning the devil, shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. And, no, you didn't hear me. It's in the Bible being told the page out. You know, a lot of a lot of folks don't cover this because it it gives us a mandate. It gives us a, a a responsibility. It gives us a job to do. Amen. Even though Job don't mean job, but in Job eighteen and eighteen, it says he shall be driven from light. From light, he shall be driven from light into darkness, and chased out of the world. Now, in the New Testament, it tells you that. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's trying look, 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 look. Some of the some of the biggest devils I met, and I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna be frank with you. Um, devil don't care what color you are. Devil is a spirit that gets in people. He's a spirit. He's a killer. He's a murderer. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a conspirator. That's a devil. I met devils. I mean, I met devils. Excuse me. I met them in the church. My grandmother, Florence, I wish you would have known her. She used to tell me some of the biggest devils are in the church. Well, why wouldn't he be? He got the club. He got the drug house. Why wouldn't he be? And I don't want to get on that. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, but in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, I haven't started teaching yet. I'm just dropping some stuff right now, dropping some knowledge. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 11 and verse number 14, it says, And don't marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He transforms himself as one who carries truth. He transforms himself as one who is sent from God. Oh my God. I mean, come on. I mean, it doesn't make sense to say that you are a man of God and you lie and you cheat and you, uh, you do everything the world does. That's not a man of God. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I hope y'all are all right. I'm, I'm just dropping some knowledge. I'm not going to stay on this, but I want you to get this. The Bible says in Job 18 and 18, it gives you the, um, the destiny of the devil. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. Theology got you going up out of here. Theology got you looking to go somewhere that you are supposedly have come from. Amen and amen. 
I've shown the world that Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 points out where we came from and where we're going. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return to God who gave it. My origin was God. My origin was heaven. And I've been loaned, and you've been loaned to the earth for, to get rid of Satan. Amen, amen. I'm sorry, the theology is all wrong. The theology is all wrong. We're going to tell the truth, and the truth is going to make somebody free. Somebody's going to be able to swallow this thing. So, Satan understands time. We don't. He understands time. He points that out in the Bible. Uh, maybe you haven't seen it, but I will draw your attention to it. When Christ the Messiah arrives in the book of Matthew, y'all all right? <laughs> in Matthew chapter number 8 and verse number 16, look what it says, Matthew 8, 16. When evening came, they brought to the Messiah many who were under the power of demons. He cast out the evil spirit with a word. Y'all all right? Amplified version. He cast out, the Messiah cast out evil spirits with a word. So if you're going to cast out evil spirits or devils, you're going to do it with word. You're not gonna, you don't need a gun. You don't need a rifle. You don't need a hatchet. You don't, you don't need to cuss. You don't need to fuss. You don't even need to fight. Because we live in a word-created world. This whole world was created with word, with words. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. So we live in a word-created world. Now, according to the scriptures, when the Messiah cast out the demons, he cast them out with a word. Oh, God, look at it. It's in the Bible if you ain't taught a page out. In Matthew 8 and 16, when evening was come, they brought to the Messiah many who were under the power of demons. And he cast out the evil spirits with a word. Good God. And restored health to all who were sick with a word. <laughs> Exhibiting his authority as the Messiah. Listen to me. He cast... If you're going to cast out demons, if you're going to put the devil on the run, you're going to do it with a word. I got a word. I walked into our sanctuary after coming back from, um, from Canada. And I walked into the sanctuary and I said, you could, you could feel the evil spirit fleeing. And in five days, all the evil spirits was out of there. Now our church is growing. Now there's joy in our, in our house of God. Amen. Now people are paying attention. Amen. I'm telling you, it's going to be done with a word. And if you don't have a word, <laughs> you don't have anything. That's why we teach the word of faith. What we teach is the word of faith. Amen and amen. So there's a set time, and you just happen to be alive in the set time of the elimination of the devil. You just happen to be chosen, as, as, as um, I think it's 1 Peter 2 and 9 said, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a people who were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Are y'all all right? You are the people. I can't say it enough. And when you come under the anointing, the power, and the wisdom of God, you wake up to a reality. Amen. People think that they can get the anointing of God uh, just by being in the church. Don't happen like that. It comes from fasting and praying and seeking God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You don't play with this. Huh. <laughs> You don't play with this. The book of Exodus, I'm going somewhere. Y'all are right now, let's teach. 
The book of Exodus chapter number 9 and verse number 5. It says, the Lord set a definite time. Comma. The Lord set a definite time. Just like you set your clock at 9 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. God set a definite time. The devil only had a short time. God gave him approximately 6,000 years. And I've come by to tell you that his 6,000 years is up. He, had, he was given 666 tricks. That's why his number is 666. That's, that's how many tricks he had. And if you've been here long enough, he plays the same tricks over and over and over again till you get a hold of that trick and the anointing comes into your life. You're able to get rid of him. The Bible says, I didn't say it. And what it's talking about, it's talking about that, that the, the, the yoke that the devil had on the people, it will be broken. And God said a definite time. According to Exodus chapter 9 and verse number 5, saying tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. So God set a definite time. And the definite time is called a set time. Oh, I got, I got, I just want to get through this. I don't know if I'm going to get through this tonight. Glory to I just want to get through this. It's too much. I'm going to, I'm going to jump on this Sunday though. At Shabbat Global Ministries, 920 North Kennedy Drive. If you're out there somewhere, come on in. 11 o'clock. We're going to tear it up. We're talking about the set time has come and the elimination of Satan. Time to go. Time to get rid of this devil. But you're going to have to do it with a word. We're here. The reason why I am an apostle is that I have to give you a word. My job is to give you a word that will turn your life and everything around you life around. My life has been turned around because of a word I heard, because a teacher that I sat under. My whole life has changed. Are y'all all right? And your life is about to change because your set time has come. So in the book of, uh, in the book of Psalms 112 and verse number 13, the prophet David, I'm talking about prophet David and King David. He says, you will arise and have mercy upon your people for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. The Bible speaks to us continuously about time. In Galatians 4 and 4, it says, but when the fullness of time was come, the fullness of time represented in Hebrew 4,000 years from Genesis all the way to Matthew. It was 4,000 years. Then the Messiah came. God sent forth his son, the Messiah, born of a woman, born under the law. What law? He was born under the law of sin and death. Adam brought that law in because God told Adam, the day that you sin, you will surely die, not physically. You will be separated from God. Death is when you are separated from God. Life is when you are one with God. My God Almighty. Now, who was this written for? I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. I just got to refresh those who, who have not heard me teach like this. In the book, who was this written for? This set time of God's favor. Who was this written for? It was written in, look in Psalms 102 and verse number 18. In the New International Version, it said, let this be written for a future generation. See, the Bible is prophetic. The Bible is 75% prophecy, 25% present, making 100%. And we don't understand prophecy because we've been taught dispensationalism and not revelation. You're all in the prophecies. You're all in the, what they call the Old Testament. No such thing. There's nothing old about that testament. It's the first testament of God that was given under Moses, who, who had a gospel. It's called the Gospel of Moses. And listen to me. Ain't no old. The Messiah was in the old. 
that you call old. We find him there. Amen and amen. Now he's in us. He's no longer in the old, what you call old. He was in the old. He said in, I, he said in Ezekiel 34 and 16, I will seek that which was lost, and I will bring again that which was driven away. That's the Messiah, the Spirit of God in the Messiah speaking through Ezekiel. Ezekiel was anointed. And it is the anointing of God that destroys the yoke. Oh, it's in the Bible. If you ain't told a page out, it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 10 and verse number 27. Listen to me. Talking about time again. And it shall come to pass in that day. The prophecy in that day. He's talking about a day that had not come yet. He said it will come to pass in that day that the devil's burden will be taken away from off your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing destroys yoke. Amen. The anointing is the power of God on an individual. Amen. The anointing is the confidence of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. It destroys anything that's trying to hold you back Hold you down. Keep you down. Good God. I mean, come I've been there. Ask Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. They were under the anointing of God. They had the wisdom of God. They were walking in the power of God. They summons angels into the fiery furnace. Amen and amen. That wasn't Jesus in the fiery furnace. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar said, God has sent an angel. An angel. God sends angels. We have angels. Well, some of them we see, some of them we don't see. Amen, amen. My wife is an angel. Dr. Gloria Maria Cummins, she ain't nothing but an angel. Amen and amen. In the book of Revelation, it talks about the angel of the church of Philadelphia, the angel over the church. Those are messengers. Good God Almighty. Y'all all right? It says that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is the power of God. The word is the power of God. You got to have something coming out of your mouth that causes the universe to bow down to your request. Amen and amen. I mean, everything, this whole planet, 196,940,000 square mile, all of this belongs to us. It don't belong to the devil. He didn't make the earth for the devil. He made the earth for you to turn it into a paradise, to turn it into heaven on earth. Thy will, Jesus, the, the Messiah, the Christ, he said, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. So who's going to turn it? Who's going to do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven? Those who have tapped into heaven, those who have tapped into the spirit of God, those who have tapped into the word of God, they ain't playing church. They chasing devils. They're the light of the world. And light eliminates darkness. Oh, y'all don't look. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm so excited. So I was taught absolutely nothing about revelation in uh, Southern Bible Institute. I was only taught about dispensation. And dispensation all, often locks us into time. We can't be locked into time if we are in eternity. I used to be in time. I'm no longer in time. I'm in eternity. I serve an eternal God. I have eternal life. So how can I be locked up in time? Time answers to us. We don't answer to time. Oh, it's in the Bible if you throw the page out. Y'all right? All right. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So you see, you see that the Messiah, he cast out devils with a word. I want to get back and show you that even the devil 2,000 years ago knew he had a little more time. Look in Matthew. It's in the Bible. If you ain't throw it out, y'all want to learn something? Stay with me. In the book of Matthew chapter number 8 and verse number 29, Matthew 8 and 29, And behold, the demons cried out, saying, 
What have we to do with you, Jesus, the Messiah, Son of God? Are you come here to torment us before the time? Oh, listen to me. He said, the, the devil said, Jesus is in the Bible, Matthew 8, 29, King James Version, if you want to look at it. He said, do you come here to torment us before the time? They knew they had a little more time. And they said, are you coming here to torment us before the time? Because the Bible said that we would possess the gates of our enemies. And they, I mean, Daniel knew that. Joseph knew that. That's why, that's why when they put Joseph in a pit, he knew that he, his job was to possess the gate of the enemy. When they put Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel knew that he was sent to possess the gates of his enemy. We, in this, dis, I got started to say in this dispensation of time, but we ain't in that day. We in the eternity. We are not here to play church and to play with Satan. We are here with an assignment from God. As Adam avoided his five assignments, Christ the Messiah came to give us back the assignments that Adam avoided, to have power, to have dominion, to replenish the earth. Come on. Amen. To spread heaven on earth. Amen. To spread peace on earth. To spread love on earth. To spread joy on earth. Amen and amen and amen. Good God Almighty. Now, the reason why I speak like this is because all of us, as I mentioned last week, we have to go through a refining period. We have to go through a refining and even a time of refining and a time of testing. Every human being that is chosen by God has to go through a refining period. Look in the book. It's in the Bible if you enjoy the page out. The book of Isaiah, chapter 48 and verse number 10. It says, Indeed, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested and chosen you in the furnace of affliction. All of us got to go through that. Christ had to go through that. Paul had to go through that. Daniel had to go through that. David had to go through that. Joseph had to go through a refining period. When he was put in the pit, he was being refined. When he was sent to prison, he was being refined. He ended up in the palace. He was ready. Amen. All of us go through that because we were chosen and we were being prepared to one day laugh at the devil, laugh at trials, laugh at uh, uh, adversary. And adversity. We will <laughs> one day is in the Bible, boy. I'm gonna cover this. I want to. I want to cover. It. I can't do it all tonight. But I tell you what, I'm gonna keep driving this thing home until you see the glory and the anointing of God fall on you. Will you understand <clears throat> that nothing happens without you speaking it? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Job 22 and 28 says, You will decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your way. Words create your world. Words cause Satan to flee. The Bible says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil with a word, and he'll flee. Oh, yeah. And we think that we can dance our way to heaven. We think that we can shout our way to heaven. Come on, we think that we can do all of this uh, stuff called churchianity, and we got it. That ain't it. If you ain't got no word, you don't have a word of faith, you have absolutely nothing. You're like a tinkling symbol. And that's why there's no power in our communities. That's why there's no power in our schools. That's why there's no power in the neighborhood. Not even a neighborhood now called a hood. They done left neighbor off. So what I'm saying is that it's going to happen with a word. He wants to get you to the point of the anointing. Remember, he says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, the power of God. And you don't get that playing with God. You don't get that playing with church. 
You get that through fasting and praying and studying and praying to God for his anointing. My God, my God. I know on October the 14th, my wife and I went to the elevation of Apostle Michael Freeman. I had been watching Dr. Fred Price for a long time. I heard all kinds of stuff about Dr. Fred Price. And, and, I, and I come to know that none of it was true. The negative things that I heard about Dr. Fred Price, none of it was true. But we sitting out in the audience. We sitting out in the audience with ministers. And Dr. Price sends his son to Brandywine, Maryland. And he said, and he said it on a videotape. He said, I'm sending my son out there, Michael. He said, I'm going to lay hands on my son. And when he come out to Brandywine, he's going to lay hands on you and impart to you an anointing. I didn't believe that kind of stuff years ago. But I'm sitting out in the audience and Fred Price Jr. comes over and lays his hands on Apostle Mike Freeman. And I got hit sitting in the audience. I felt it. Said I didn't used to believe that. But I'm going to tell you, I got hit. Then I looked at my wife. She got hit. And I'm going to tell you, that anointing was so powerful up in that place that night that if we would have been standing on our feet, we would have been stretched out on the floor. Now, you don't have to believe me, but you're not that great that I need to lie to you. I'm telling you, the anointing and the transferring of impartation is real. And this word... When you understand the word of God, that's why the Bible tells you out of all of thy getting, get an understanding. When you understand the power of the word of God, that word gets on the inside of you. And that word begins to grow you into the anointed Messiah. Oh my God, my God, my God. And I'm telling you, it is not a hard thing to do, but we got all kind of stuff that keeps us out of the word of God. We got all kind of activities, all kind of cell phones, all kind of computers, all kind of games that keep us from really. And then we got these folks that think they know they don't know. They act like they know. You can have, you can have more degrees than a thermometer and still not know. Y'all all right? Listen. When you get prepared through tests, and affliction, as he said, I've chosen you in the, he said, I've tested and chosen you in the furnace of affliction, of affliction. When I get you there, God's saying, I'm preparing you to laugh at your trials and be joyous in the midst of the adversary. Then you know it's time for the Baraka blessing. You know it's time for the blessing. In the book of Job, I'm going to stop because this is too much for one night. In the book of Job, chapter number five and verse number 20 is in the word. I'm just going to stay with the word. You'll get to the point that you'll laugh at your adversary. I mean, sometimes this adversary, I mean, this adversary surprises me. I mean, he can do some of the craziest stuff, you know, and, um, and I found it in the church, you know, but it surprises me because when you are under the, the anointing, I hate to say it like this, but when the real anointing of Christ the Messiah is on you. It's almost like you got eyes behind your back. Nothing escapes you. No trick that can be poured over you blinds you from not seeing it. Yeah, man, you, you get to the point you become so sensitive, you don't have to be present to hear what's going on. Oh, we're talking about that. It's scriptural. You know, but we're not walking in the power of God as we should have walked in the power of God because we had too many preachers competing with one another. They're trying to out-preach one another. They, and they're preaching a slavery day message. You know, I mean, a slavery day message. Hooping and hollering and screaming and jumping and not empowering the people. Oh, I hate to say it like that, but it's the truth and you know it. To listen to a man teach the word of God is almost like, well, that was nice, you know, and, and Mr. Power, don't even get it. Listen to me. 
when you are prepared for the anointing and by the anointing, and you have been chosen in the furnace of affliction, according to Isaiah 48 and 10. It says in Job 5, 20 through 22, it says in famine, he will redeem you from death, the anointing. In war, from the power of the sword, you will be hidden from the scourge of the tongue. You will not be afraid. We don't have fear. He said you will not be afraid when destruction comes. He said you will laugh at violence and famine. It's in the Bible. He said you will laugh. You get to the point where you say, like, like Ali said to George Foreman, when George Foreman was hitting him with all he had. And Ali said, is that all you got, George? And George said, that's about it. You'll laugh at the devil. For he has no power over you. According to Luke 10 and 19, the Messiah says, I give you power over scorpions and serpents and over all the works of your enemy. And nothing by any means will be able to hurt you. Every plot, every scheme, every creep formed against us is brought to nothing. Amen and amen. My wife told me I got five minutes. See, everything based on time. It is time for us to wake up. This devil has had you bound, your finances bound, scraping and struggling, sick. You're not supposed to be sick. Yeah, my wife uh, came under a burden of ministry. That's what made her like that, carrying the burden of the ministry and fighting uh -huh, fighting demons. But I came back from I came back from Canada back in November, uh, back in December, I came back from Canada with a word. Yakwab Yabaraka. Next thing I know she up washing dishes. Yeah. I said, what you doing up? Because God gave me a word. And God wants to give you a word. You need a word from heaven, a word from God. And stop thinking that Jesus' last name is Christ. His name is Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one. And it is the anointing that destroys every yoke. And with the anointing, you can chase the devil off of your money, off of your health, out of your community, out of your church, <laughs> Anywhere he shows up, he will become ashes under your feet. The set time has come. And the Bible told us in the book of Exodus 9 and 5, the Lord set a definite time. He gave, de de he gave the devil enough time so that when you get here, he gotta, you got to let him know his time has expired. When did it expire? That's a whole nother lesson. But I know when it expired. The whole world thought that the world was going to come. A lot of people thought that the world was going to come to the end in the year 2000. Yeah. People went out and bought generators. They went and stocked up on freezers. They went and bought all the water. I had, I know, I know, I know a woman. She filled her barn up with food. Filled her barn up. With water, generators, talking about the world going to come to an end. Everything's going to fall. I said, no, not yet. But I can tell you when his time was up. I can tell you it's up now. And I can tell you this. We're letting him work overtime. I know some of y'all are. He shouldn't be working overtime if you got the anointing of God on your life, if you got the power of God on your life, if you got the wisdom of God in your life, he should not be working in your life. You should be experiencing heaven on earth while you live. And when this journey is over and your assignment is done, you return back to God according to Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust Return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return to God who gave it. We've been living under a fairytale uh, gospel. Yeah, I hate to say it. No, I don't. I don't hate to say it. I love to say it. We've been living under a fairytale 
mystical gospel, and it's time to wake up everybody. Oh, yeah. I was on an album called Wake Up Everybody, and I was also on an album called Now Is The Time with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. It's time to get up, and it's time to put our resources together and have real power, people organizing, working together for economic rebirth. That's power. And I say, look, if you love our ministry as much as we do, and if you love the Word of God as much as we do, then you need to come on and, and put your money where your mouth is. The Bible says it like this. Where a man's heart is, there will his treasure be also. So if your heart is in, the, is in the truth, your heart is in the word of God, then your treasure will be there. The Messiah said that. He said, where a man's heart is, there will his treasure be also. We have. We have a need. We're expanding. We're growing. We started a children's church last week. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. We renovated downstairs. We're still renovating downstairs. As a matter of fact, Shabbat Global Ministries, uh, Minister Tracy is working on the, the stairway right now. Been working on it for about five hours a day. We need your support because we're going to build something. We need our own. We have our own radio network, 24 hours, seven days a week. We need our own TV network. Amen. We need our own, and we're going to grow, and we're going to expand. I want you to go to Shabak Radio 1. Shabak, S-H-A-B-A-C-H, Radio 1. Dot com. Yeah, I'm going to get there. Okay. ShabakRadio1.com. And, and look at it. As a matter of fact, order the book, The Two Covenants. Nothing like it on the planet Earth. Never one written like this. The Two Covenants. Order the book, $25, shipping free. We like Amazon. You pay no shipping charge. This book is powerful. It's going to be one of our subjects in the School of the Prophets University coming August the 20th. Amen. And you want to get this book. There's nothing like it on the planet other than, you know, the scriptures of God. But I got scriptures of God in the book. Amen. And so... Um, we want your support. We love your support. I have not gotten to my message tonight, but I did taxi on the runway. I ain't took off yet. And on Sunday, we're going to be talking about how you can understand the time that we live in. The set time has come. It ain't coming. It has come. Satan's time is up. His time has expired. And if you don't know it, you know what? If you don't know that his time has expired, you will still be giving him some credit for stuff. His time is up in my life. Oh, yeah, he done. He can't win. He can't whoop me at all. He's ashes under my feet, and God wants him to be ashes under your feet. His time has expired, and they get mad. He, the demon's mad with me because I tell him I know what time it is. Your time is up. You have no authority. No longer over my life, over the life of my children, over the life of my family, over the life of our church. You have no more authority there. Your time has expired. All right? I am Apostle Jeremiah Cummins with my wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummins. We want to see you Sunday. If you're in the surrounding areas, 920 North Kennedy Drive, uh, right here in Kankakee, Illinois. Come on in, 11 o'clock, be there. If you want to bring your children to Children's Church, you need to come at 10 o'clock. We got teachers. We got a wonderful renewed basement. Um, I, mean, re I mean, really nice. Minister Tracy has done a wonderful job. 10 o'clock, Children's Church. All right? 11 o'clock, worship and word service. I'm telling you, 920 North Kennedy Drive, Kankakee, Illinois. I don't care if you... Three hours away, four hours away, five hours away. Come on in. We're going to have a word explosion. And if they live further than that. If they live further than that, we're going to send a plane to them? Well, no. They can, they can tune in <laughs> on Facebook Live at noon. Facebook Live at noon. We're at live. Sunday, at Sunday. The set time has come. Satan's time is up. Expired. And he says, I give you power over scorpions and serpents and over all the works of the enemy. And the book of Exodus said, I'm going to give you the gates of your enemy 
and nothing by any means will be able to hurt you. I am, and I'm glad to be Apostle Jeremiah Cummings with my wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummings, and your best just got better. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday and again on next Thursday at 7 o'clock. God bless you. All of you, you know we love you. God bless you.